die. Am I glad to see you. Hey, April. Nice to hear from you again. I need your help. I am trying to pick colors for my next quilt. My problem is I love all colors and my stash can be pretty much summed up as rainbow. I would like to use something other than rainbow in my next quilt, but I'm not sure how to bring the colors together. April, you know I love color. That's one of the reasons I got into quilting. I think we should start from the beginning with a color wheel. And you know, it looks like a rainbow, which I think is great for you, April, because I know you are all about rainbow fabrics. Hi everybody, it is April and I am in my craft room. And today we are going to make a Jacob's Ladder block using analogous colors. Let's start with the color wheel, like I showed April. This is color 101, and there's three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. Now, there's three secondary colors, and those secondary colors are here, and they are made by, of course, mixing the primary colors. So red and yellow make orange, yellow and blue make green, blue and red make purple. You know, I know you're thinking, I know that, I know that, but what does that have to do with quilting? Well, you need to understand how and why a color wheel is organized. Um, when you look at the wheel, I think that's harmonious. You see a rainbow, and that is really pleasing to the eye, isn't it? But what if you don't want to always make your quilts rainbow? I think every quilter should have a color wheel of some sort in their quilt room so that they can refer to this, and it, it is inspiring. I picked up this little pocket color wheel at um, Maggie's on Main, my quilt shop here in Emmett. You know why? Because she's also an artist and a quarter of her quilt shop is fine arts because she's a painter. So this color wheel is really good. There's, there's a front and a back to it. Look, here's monotone colors and how they work. I love color, I love color wheels. And I'm going to give you three easy color schemes that are gonna help you make harmonious quilts. Hit me with your best shot, Di. The first one is analogous. So if you're gonna make a quilt using analogous color, you're gonna use colors that are next to each other on the color chart, at least three. So you might use three shades of orange to yellow. You might use blue and green and purple. Those are analogous colors because they're next to each other on the color wheel chart. I love blues and greens together. So three or more of those colors together would be an analogous, analogous, analogous. How do you say that? Analogous colors, because they're right next to each other, create a calming, visually pleasing display. Isn't that what we want in our quilts? But there's enough visual interest in those colors, those analogous colors, to create contrast. So it's still visually pleasing. So you can definitely pick out the blues and the greens and the purples, etc. There's also warm and cool colors. Warmer colors are the red and the yellows, and the cool colors are the greens and the blues. Okay, so remember that while we're talking about color. The next color group is called contrasting. So on the color wheel, if you take a look at the red, what's opposite or what's contrasting the red? Oh, that would be this green. Look, purple and yellow and blue and orange. Those are contrasting colors. And you can make great quilts with contrasting colors. Because they're opposite, they create visual interest or you've gotta be careful because they can create tension. So it depends on what look you want to have. Now, in a quilt where you, you're using contrasting colors, you want to maybe balance out if you've got a little bit of tension. And what I like to balance it out with is maybe the same pattern. So the same, same pattern repeated on your quilt blocks would 
maybe kind of bring that tension or contrast together a little bit and it will create harmony. The last group of colors that I wanna talk about is just one color. So it's a monotone or monochromatic color scheme. The monochromatic color scheme is the same color but used in different values. What is a value? A value is the variation of light and dark. Take a look at this. So here's blue and here's a darker blue and then it gets lighter. Those quilts are really calming and they evoke calmness and peacefulness. I hope this lesson on color helped you. And April, do you have any questions that I can answer from this color lesson? I love blues and greens together. And should I have all of my blues in a block and all of my greens in another block? Or can I mix the blues and greens together? April, your question is a good one. And I think you should go for it. Since you're using analogous colors, you can mix several blues and several greens and several purples. I probably wouldn't put any whites in it. Keep, keep that block totally analogous with no white. I think it'll be a stunning block. Oh, wow. Thank you for that information. That's exactly what I needed to help me with my quilt. By the way, what block are you making? So I'm going to take those colors and incorporate them into a Jacob's Ladder Quilt block. Oh my gosh, I love your idea. Let's see, I just did a monotone quilt. I think I'm gonna do complimentary then. And I'm gonna do that same block. It's gonna be a bit of a challenge, but I think I can handle it. Thanks, and let's check in after our blocks or quilt are finished. I'd love to see what you've come up with, and I know our viewers would love to see it too. This is great. I cannot wait to see what you do with complementary colors. Using Diane's suggestions and her lesson in color theory, I am making analogous blocks. I think it's analogous colors. No. I am making a Jacob's Ladder block using analogous colors. So let me show you a block that I finished. As is typical of me, I did not want to have little bitty teeny tiny squares. I found a pattern that is free on the Fat Quarter Shop and I will link it in my description below. But I supersized it. This is made up of nine blocks or nine squares. So you have a square here, a square here, a square here, and essentially you have five four patches and four half square triangles. Each one of my squares is an eight and a half inch square. Let me show you how I cut my fabric. Essentially, I am using three different colors in order to make my Jacob's Ladder. So I have to figure out which color I want to use as my background color. For example, on this set, I used white as my background color. When I asked Diane what to do when mixing analogous colors. She suggested that I not use a white background fabric, but use the lightest of the fabrics for the background fabric. That being said, this is going to be my background fabric. So I am going to cut my background fabric out first. I need to make four half square triangle blocks and five four patch blocks. Now my half square triangle blocks, I am going to start out at nine and a half inches. I want to end up with an eight and a half inch block. The way I do that is I take my nine and a half inch square ruler, then I take my 
big ruler, which is only eight and a half inches, so I can't just use that to cut this. I'm going to take away my nine and a half inch ruler, and then I'm going to cut out a strip of nine and a half inches. This is my background fabric for my half square triangles. Then I need a strip at four and a half inches for my eight and a half inch four patch block. So this is the background fabric for my four patch as well. And cut out four and a half inches. So I'm going to use this for my four patch blocks and I'm going to use this for my half square triangles. So let's do the half square triangles first. Again, I'll take my nine and a half inch square ruler, open this up, put my long ruler next to it, move my nine and a half inch and cut my fabric. Now I need the fabric for the other half of my four patch. So this has been cut recently, it's straight. So I'm just gonna cut a four and a half inch strip out of this. What we have to make our Jacob's Ladder block is nine and a half inches by width of fabric, background fabric nine and a half inches by width of fabric color to go with the background, four and a half inches of background color by width of fabric, and four and a half inches of the color for our four patches by width of fabric. This is the fabric that you're going to need in order to make your Jacob's Ladder square or block using eight and a half inch squares. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press all of this. So let's start with our four patches. So I've sewn these two strips together of my background fabric and my color, which is the green. Now I am going to trim off the selvage edge and I need 10 sets, no, I need four and a quarter inch strips to make five four patches. And I think I can only get nine out of this strip set. So what I am doing here is I have all of these sets of two and I am going to make my four patches. And what I will do is just sew them together like that. So here I have my squares that I cut out at nine and a half inches. I have them right sides together and even though they don't match up perfectly, it is okay. I'm going to make sure that I line up this corner and this corner because we're going to cut them down. Now I have a little tool. It is by Creative Grids and it is a half square triangle tool. And how you use it is there are grooves here and grooves here, and actually grooves throughout the center of this tool. And you have a little point on each end. I line up, depending on the size of my square, this one I can line up the inside groove to where I can see the point on my block and then I do the same at the bottom. So I can see the point at this position in my block and I can see the point at the bottom of my block inside that groove. 
I take a pen or pencil or whatever your marking tool of choice is and I mark that center line. So now what I will do is I will sew a quarter inch seam on each side of this center line. And when I do that, I get this. So now I'm ready to cut these two apart. So I'll line my ruler up on the points again. Those points are important. And I will cut straight down the center. So now I have two and when I open them up, they are half square triangle blocks. And I need four of these. So then I will press them so they're nice and flat and I will break out my rotating cutting mat. If you do not have a rotating cutting mat, then you can just turn them around. I saw someone use this on a video and it was very helpful with what they were doing. So I invested in one myself. So now I have my eight and a half inch square, which is the size of the block that I want my half square triangle to be. So I will line up my block. There's a line going through the center of this ruler. I will line the center of my block, which is the seam with this line and then I am going to put my weight on it. It seems, the weight seems to help quite a bit. And then I will cut each side. Peel off the excess. And here I have a beautiful half square triangle. So once I have all four of my half square triangles and all five of my four patches, I will show you how to put together Jacob's Ladder. This is how you lay out your Jacob's Ladder. In the center is going to be a four patch and in all four corners. So the green is going this way and the blue is going that way. And then you fill in with what look like to me are arrows. And they're your half square triangles. So here the arrow looks like it's pointing in to me and this arrow is pointing in. And this arrow is pointing in and this arrow is pointing in. And there you have Jacob's Ladder. So in this block, I didn't use white as my background color. I have this blue and then this turquoise, and then I've got this solid, and the solid has matching colors in here, and then this matches this. So I, kind of, I really like the way that looks together. Now with this, I have all greens, and therefore I used a white background. Here, I used a light green and a light blue, and then a blue that had some darker splatter and some little bitty specks of green. So that just brought everything together. And then down here, I've got the blue with the green in it, so I used a green. And actually, what I'm kind of trying to do is incorporate the same colors in some different blocks just so it might be more cohesive. That is my progress so far. I haven't decided if I'm going to make this three rows or four rows of three. 
but so far, I'm having a whole lot of fun. I want to thank Di of Sister Chicks Quilting for helping me put together these analogous blocks. With her color theory lesson, I was able to figure out what goes together and looks good together. I hope this tutorial was helpful. I will show you the finished quilt when I get it done. I'm working on other blocks now. I just haven't had the chance to finish them yet for this video. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Eat some chocolate and be kind to everyone. Until next time. And then, should I? Yeah. I think you should make your block using blues and greens and purples and no whites. Let's see how that looks, April. So each, this is, <laughs> makes absolutely no sense at all. And I was gonna say something else and now I can't remember what it was I was gonna say.